Hi, Brian from Live from the Lockdown Lounge. Welcome to Thursday night in the lounge. And tonight is Hawaiian night. I don't know why it's Hawaiian night. Well, this was the only shirt in the rack. So tonight is Hawaiian night and every single one of you is going to get a lay. See what I did there? Welcome, welcome, everybody. It's a big, big night tonight. We have got an another awesome guest. We only have awesome guests. We should be awesome at the Lockdown Lounge. Have I mentioned I'm your host, Brian? I should have. Anyway, we are brought to you by the amazing, wonderful people at Cranbourne Music. They are amazing and wonderful because they support the music industry. They care. They have a heart, just like us. They want to look after us all in this period of volatility. That's what it is, a period of volatility. And you know what? They are there. Their stores are open in Limbrook and Elizabeth Street City. You can shop online. You can click and collect, or you can get it delivered, or you can go in the store. You, with four of your friends, can go in. Only groups of five, Dan Andrews said. Only groups of five. Go in there. Buy some music stuff. Come on. Cranbourne Music. Keeping the beat alive. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us for the first time, where the hell have you been? Thank you for inviting us into your little laptop. We are all about supporting the music industry, and we do this by telling stories and interviewing all the people within the, the industry so that they can tell us how they're coping, what they're doing, what their next project is. It's fabulous. It's a really, really good show. And we've got all of your favorite segments, including chat, music, gig chicken, coping with lockdown, back when I thought I was cool. And I can tell you, we have got a fantastic entry tonight. And we always start with Pets are good for ratings. Now, pets have got nothing to do with music unless you play video with music behind it of pets. That's what we do here. You see how clever we are? Um, I can't even explain what this video is. So pets are good for ratings. Roll the video. There you go. Was that fun? It was cute. It was cute. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our guest tonight. I'm going to read the rap sheet because that's what we do. And, uh, okay, we always build the tension when we do this. So, you know, you don't know who it is, even though we've been advertising it all day, all week. Now, our guest tonight has been performing internationally, touring in places like Japan, New Zealand, India. He's been invited and featured on the Blue Mountains Ukulele Festival in New South Wales. Have to ask him about that. He's a keynote speaker bringing mental health awareness through his music and life experiences. Now, that, that is impressive. On average, our guest performs 175 to 200 shows a year. My God, he must be tired. He's one of the busiest, busiest musicians around, ladies and gentlemen. He's influenced by artists such as Stevie Wonder, Tick, John Mayer, Tick, Chaka Khan, Tick, Tracy Chapman, Tick, Marvin Gaye, Tick. I'm going to enjoy interviewing this gentleman. Regular gigs all around Melbourne, does the cover scene stuff, but also does originals. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honour to introduce you to G-Man. Hello, G-Man. Hey, Brian. How are you? I am so good. Look at you and your little spotlight, your, your blue light disco going on there. Believe it or not, it's my lounge room. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? <laughs> it is. It looks, it looks very, very cool. So... Can I call you G-Man or can I call you Garav? 
Um, well, just how you said my name, that's the reason why everyone calls me G-Man. No, <laughs> that was a good try, by the way. <laughs> was it? I, you know, I just went out there on a limb. How should I have said it? Um, so the authentic version of, I mean, authentic way of saying it is Gorov. Gorov. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So th- there's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no Gorov. No, 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 just no. Gorov. Gorov. Yeah, yeah, Gorov. And you didn't want to go with Gorov Man. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's actually it didn't even start there. It's funny because um, this is years ago. I went with my friends to, uh, you know, we went for karaoke. Well, actually, they dragged me to karaoke and, uh, you know, they put my name down there and, and the host is like calling everyone's name and, and, you know, there was a little pause. This, ca- this host is reading my name and he's going, all right, the next person we have is... Go, uh, G-Man! <laughs> so, believe it or not, that's how it all started. Wow. Yes. And, and so you started you started your musical journey karaokeing, and I'm sure you would have absolutely slayed them and you thought, Hey, I might be able to make money out of this. Oh well let's just say that was the that was the that was the name that, that stuck on that night. But I think uh well yeah, obviously I was doing music before that, but that was just funny like on how the name actually started. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and now it's like it's all your stuff because your um your your cover man is uh G Man and the Powerhouse, right? That's right. That's yep. right. So I I play covers, originals, uh weddings, functions, all that kind of thing. But obviously, you know, I think that's just the music industry. Um, you know, anyway that you know you obviously you you, you are outsourcing yourself as a musician, so you it's like one of those things right you're a gun for hire so you know you just play with different bands and you know cover bands and weddings and whoever sort of books you first let's put yeah. it that way that's right and you know what when when the gun is as versatile and as awesome as your gun then it's hired a lot because you have do you see how i brought all those things together yeah, you see that's very, that's very funny yeah <laughs> that's host skill you know i went to host school um, and oh. bringing all of those elements together. Hey, be, and because of all of those elements, I, I want to ask you if you will play musical challenge with us. And I need to find, I need to establish this right at the start is basically musical challenge involves throughout the interview. If I throw songs at you randomly throughout the interview, are you up for just playing them? Sure. Sure. Right. That was easy. I didn't have to sell very hard. I so, have no idea what you're going to ask me, but okay, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, well, if I if I said to you like early on, let's let's uh, you know, I'm a big James Arthur fan. If I said to you, play me just a few bars of uh, "Say You Won't Let Go," could you do that for me? Sure. Let go and just say you won't let go. Oh man, you see, that's exactly how you play this game. You're you're a good sport. We love that. So I'm gonna throw them at randomly oh, throughout okay. throughout the show. Right. But let's let's talk about I want to talk about your musical journey and, and where you are now. And obviously I want to touch on your uh, original stuff, but I'm interested in the, um, the, the ukulele uh, competition or the, um, uh, the, the ukulele event that you were asked. Your yeah, festival. Actually. Festival. That's it. Tell me about that. Okay. So it actually all started with uh, my song. So I performed this song called live your life um, at this um, so I, I follow this vocal coach and he's like an international, uh, you know, sensation and all that kind of thing when it comes to coaching. And he's not just a vocal coach, he's a life coach and a mentor and everything. So obviously with time, I have gotten very close to him. So I, uh, you know, and it's, it's one of those things that I, I used to do his warm up CDs and all that kind of thing. And then finally, when I found out that he was actually coming down to Australia, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go there and meet him. So, um, and he actually, you know, was, I guess he was asking people to fill out their things and, uh, you know, fill up the form. And what do you think about the show? And what would you like to do? Would you like to do a song? So I'm like, yeah, sure. I would love to do this song because I think this song could, um, you know, this is something that I wrote in this time because I went through a bit of a, you know, hard time, depression, uh, anxiety, PTSD, all that sort of stuff. And we can touch on that later, but I'm just letting you know on how that all started. So I performed at that event and it was amazing because it was like, uh, you know, I don't know, about 800 odd people there and it was uh, incredible. And that song just, uh, 
it was, it was amazing. So obviously I got approached uh, by some people saying that, hey, would you, we, would, uh, we run the uh, Blue Mountains Ukulele Festival. Would you like to be a part of that? And I think that's how it all started. So I ended up playing my song over there. And it was cool because there were a lot of people with my sheet music and they were playing along to when I was wow. playing. It was, it was so bizarre. Like, and I'm just like, what's going on? Like, you know, it's like people are playing it. I'm, I'm looking at it like people are playing a cover, but it's actually not. I mean, I mean, it's a cover for them, but it's, it's yeah, it was, it was just one of those things that you can't get your head, wrap your head around it. You know? <laughs> Man, that, that is amazing. <laughs> hey, and you've been very um, open and honest about your struggles with mental health, yes. which, which I, I, I think is very brave. Um, and you've also been a, a keynote speaker. So you go around talking about, you know, your struggles and and being a mentor to to others through music tell us a little bit about that um well I, I, okay so you know coming back coming back to all the things that i was saying all the things that you know i suppose the things that we've all been through and i, I think i just try to use my own experiences and try to make sure that you know maybe uh, it can it can actually someone can relate uh, with that, even if it's one person or two people or whatever it is, you know, because I'm just trying to help with my music. And I think because uh, I've, um, you know, I've been through, um, I've, I've survived suicide and all that kind of, kind of thing as well. So I've been suicidal and I think, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that anymore. So I know I feel really powerful saying that because I've, I've been on the other end and I feel really good about it because I know that if I, you know, I knew at that point of time, if I live on, I'm going to be writing music and I wanted to, I wanted to write music that could help someone in that state or it could help someone, even if they're not in any state, but just could have the difficulties, you know, up and downs or anything like that, you know, just day to day things, knowing mm -hmm. that, you know, hey, life is not over. You still have your whole life ahead of you. But for now, you just need to look at each day as it comes. You know, yep. so, yep. Uh, and I think that's kind of uh, what was the most important thing because I'm like, well, I want to use my experience to help others in whatever way I can. Yep. No, that's, that's um, such a, a wonderful, powerful message. And so is it essentially youth that you do your, um, your keynote spe uh, speeches to, or is it um, uh, just a wide range of... Um, just the, a wide uh, range. It, it's yep. not necessarily youth, but I mean, it could be, it could be anyone, you know, because yep. at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're young or, you know, older, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it can hit you at any point of time, you know. Yep. My experiences started when I was I was a little child, which obviously had no control over. But at the same time, you know, it's like, well, I want to help people in whatever way I can. And I know, like friends of mine, they message me saying that, oh my God, you know, my kids really love your music as well, and they just can't stop dancing to it or whatever, <laughs> you know. And and it's just it's just such a beautiful thing to know that. And you know, it's so humbling to know that little even little children can, you know, hear those uh, those words because obviously I try to keep it, you know, a little. I suppose it's easier to digest as well. Yeah. So I want yep. to write songs that can help people. Well, so. I just want to touch on one of the things that you said there. So obviously you needed to sort yourself out first. Yes. Once you were able to sort yourself out, you were able to sort of make a change um, for others. So I think this is a very poignant moment that perhaps we can um, do a little bit of uh, man in the mirror, Michael Jackson, um, okay. make that change. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good. I'm gonna make a difference. I'm gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar of my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street Do not have enough to eat Who am I to be blind Pretending not to need any I saw must disregard A broken bottle top And a one man's soul They follow each other On the wind you know Cause they got no way that's why I want you to know I'm starting with the man in the mirror I'm asking him to change his ways and No message could have been any clearer If you want to make a world a better place Take a look at yourself and make the change yeah. No 
Ah, so good. So good. That was just, uh, that was, it, that moment just felt right for that song. And I, I'm sorry to just throw these at you, but I did warn you at the start I was going to do this. And you just, you just smile and nod and you go with my crazy ideas, which is, which is why we love you, G-Man. And I'm sure our audience would, would appreciate, um, one, that you've, you're up for the challenge and two, that you're um, so willing to share that, um, that beautiful story with us and the fact that you are out there making a change and by trying you are trying but you're doing that you're doing that through music which is what what this this show is all about so so thank you so much so tell me a little bit about um your originals because you're going to perform an original for us now which i guess um it it falls under that umbrella again doesn't it about yes, mental sir. health and tell me the origins of that song and um and how that's come to pass okay so this song um that i'll be performing for you it's called live your life and uh, it obviously holds a, you know, very special place because I think the main saying of uh, of the song is live your life each day at a time, which means that you know, hey, your your day could be really hard right now, and it may, may be impossible to see what's going to happen tomorrow. But it doesn't matter. Just take each day as it comes. Take every moment as it comes. Embrace everything. You know, embrace the people who are in your life. You don't have to push people away. You know, it's uh, it's important to know that who are in your life. And I think that's what the song's about as well. So it's like live your life each day at a time. It's it's uh, being thankful for each and every blessing that you have in your life. And you know what? One of the biggest blessings is you wake up every day. You know, you can you wake up. It's like I'm, I'm thankful that, hey, I woke up today. I'm, I'm breathing. I've got a roof over my head. I can... You know, I can eat. I can pay rent. I can do all that sort of stuff because I know there are so many people out there who uh, can't even do that. Mm. that that's so, a another a really powerful message so i'm gonna let you um get set up there for for that song um ladies and gentlemen wow so so emotional and you know such a um uh impactful interview already thank you g man so he's going to do an original song for us it's called live your life ladies and gentlemen i give you g man you so down you said you need another holiday maybe take me away let's turn this frown upside down and if you feel And it's time to let go of 
just live your life each day at a time. Wow, man. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was, that was spectacular. I've actually, I've actually seen that um, video clip online, which um, I must say the production values are fantastic. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, shooting that video because you look, you look a little Hollywood to me. Hollywood. I don't know about Hollywood, but I'll tell you what, I'm just another average Joe out there just uh, trying to, you know, help uh, with getting the messages across. And I think the most important is that, like, there's so many people, you know, everyday people in that video as well, you know, some friends and people and who were awesome, who were holding some messages. And it's just easy to, um, you know, easy to come across. And I'll tell you what, that video is one thing that obviously was, I released that video on YouTube about six months ago. And mm -hmm. obviously, it's been quite the whirlwind, uh, whirlwind, trying to get it sorted and everything. Because obviously, you know, it, it's just life gets in the way, and you know, it's it's yeah. hard and getting all it all organised. But it's actually uh, shot by Jeff Shepard. You know? I, so we yeah, love yeah. Jeff. Jeff's we, been on the show. Absolutely, I know that. I think I saw his show as well. So yeah. I think that was one of the first ones that I saw. That's right, and that, yeah. that was incredible. He's he's definitely one of my favourite musicians of all time. Of course, yeah. He's got such a beautiful, soulful voice and, and such a beautiful anything. soul as well. We're so fortunate. Everybody we've had on here has just been amazing people. I think that's me, though. I think I bring that out of people when they come on here. They probably, after the show, they turn into terrible people, but it's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true at all. That's not true at all. I'm sure, I'm sure you're wonderful pre and post interview with Brian. G-Man? I, I, I try. So, you know, <laughs> I'll try not to be terrible after this one. I, hey, I can't but, guarantee. You can't guarantee. Hey, where can people see um, that video? Because it's had thousands and thousands of views, hasn't it? On, on YouTube, it's had over 25,000 uh, views. Wow. And that was literally in the first uh, two weeks of wow. being uh, released. I mean, that was, that was insane. And I'd, I'd obviously... All I wanted to do was just have a little video out there. I wasn't doing it for anything. I just wanted to make sure that this is one of the accomplishments that I wanted to achieve for myself because I wanted to have something out there. I wanted to have at least a uh, music video of one of my songs and I thought, what better song could it be than Live Your Life? Yep. So, and, you know, especially with the message and obviously finally it all happening, it all came together and uh, yeah, it, it all was shot. And I think you can find it on YouTube. Uh, you can also find it on my Facebook page as well, or, or my, my, my band page with G-Man yep. and the Powerhouse. So you can find it there as well. G-Man and the Powerhouse or um, G-Man YouTube. Is that your... Uh... Um, so it's youtube.com slash G-Man Powerhouse. It will take you straight to, uh, to my channel right there. Fantastic. Hey, um, G-Man, I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, Live from the Lockdown Lounge is sponsored by the amazing people at Cranbourne Music. Woohoo! <laughs> we love them. We love them. You too. So I you, you taught at Cranbourne Music years ago. You sorry? I used to teach there like years ago. I filled oh. in for a couple of teachers. Like Wow. Like, we're going back, I don't know, maybe over 10 years ago. Wow. There yeah. you go. There you go. So look, there's a, there's a link there everywhere. And I guess that shows you the, the caliber of staff and personnel that they have at Cranbourne Music, oh, you know, absolutely. teachers, people on the floor, they're, they're musos. They know their stuff. And uh, G-Man was once a part and still is. Once you're a part of the Cranbourne music family, you're always a part. Gee, this, this commercial is going forever, but it's all true. And you know what? Cranbourne music, they've got a special a special deal going on at the moment. It's called Taylor Day's special event. Okay. And because it's been so popular, it's been extended to the end of May, people, right to the end of May. And basically... Buy a Taylor guitar and you add another, okay, you got that? You buy a Taylor guitar and you add another for just $149. What? That is ridiculous. I know. I know. It's ridiculous. Now, you need Why? to go on the site to see exactly all the, uh, all the details here, but I'm going to give you a snapshot. Are you ready for this, right G-Man? I would go there right now, but you know what? I, I, don't, I can't afford it, but I would love to buy one right now. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm sure they have, they, they have deals and things that you can pay off over time and all that kind of jazz. So, okay. So you can choose from two amazing offers. 
now through to the end of May. So you get an acoustic GS Mini Academy Series or Baby Taylor for just $149 with the purchase of select Taylor models. Choose one of the two exceptional offers below. Offer one, buy any 300 series or higher guitar and add an acoustic GS Mini or Academy Series guitar for just $149, Australian dollars, of course, or offer two, buy any 200, 200 plus or 200 deluxe series guitar and add an acoustic baby Taylor guitar for just $149. Wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. Right now. <laughs> you get, get, no, finish the interview first okay, okay. and then you can do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, cranbermusic.com.au, Taylor Days. Wow, it's all happening. So, um, I think after all that, um, can you give me a little bit of uh, Here Comes the Sun, the Beatles? Oh, okay. Wow, that came out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> that's that's the challenge, my friend. Okay, so... Here comes the sun Here comes the sun I say It's alright It's alright Ah, so good So good You're like a little ray of sunshine you know that's what you are that's a song as well (laughs) (laughs) good man hey um you know what we uh we ask our guests to provide us with a uh, an image of themselves back when they thought they were cool and that's the segment ladies and gentlemen it's called back when i thought i was cool because all of us musos have been on a journey where we had big mullets or frizzy hair or stuff going on and um there's great photos in the archive and (laughs) g-man he's already embarrassed but um (laughs) to his eternal credit he's sent us some images now before we show you the image of course we have to play the sting Play the sting back when I thought I was cool. Ooh, how you like me now? How you like me now? Ooh. Back when I thought I was cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now I'm going to build it up a little bit, um, G-Man. So you've sent us two images, and they are just as... oh as beautiful as each other and um uh, all right so yeah we're going to put them up on the screen right now okay look at that look at all that that hair where is all that hair gone now tell me g-man where who why how what was going on there as in what happened to my hair or what (laughs) What, where was this time what were you doing and what was the what was the plan the two images on there so on the left um that's obviously when i'm wearing sunnies um that was in 2006 so that was actually one of the first bands first original bands that i was a part of and we were all housemates and i believe uh yeah look i i actually came to australia in about 2005 so i've been here about 15 years now right um yeah originally from where India. India, okay. Yeah, so hence the strange name Gaurav. I mean, well, it's not strange <laughs> over there because nearly every second third person is Gaurav. But anyway, um, yeah, so that, that was in 2006. And obviously, you know, I just wanted to rock my long hair and all that kind of thing. So I'm like, okay, I just wanted to get it out of my system. It's like, yep. Um, so that was that. And then in 2007, I actually shaved my hair for the cure for cancer to raise money for that. And um, yeah, so basically, I have this now, Oy! <laughs> <laughs> which is like obviously a bit of a you know. But I'll tell you what, it's it's freaking amazing. And the, the awesome thing, I never wanted to grow my hair back. Was the, the, when I had a shower after the the head was shaved, it was literally one of the most ecstatic experiences of my entire life. Yes. And I mean, you know, you know what that what an amazing. Time what do you mean? Was. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> Well, I'm talking about, you know, going, it's incredible, you know, because all your nerve endings and it's so sensitive and everything, it's just beautiful. So after that, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to leave this because I don't have to wake up two hours before and put product in my curly hair and 
<laughs> oh my goodness, I don't miss that one bit. You no, know. and you are you are a very good looking bald man. In fact, we've had lots of letters about the amount of good looking bald men that have been on our show. We've had um oh, we've had Adam Roach. Um, he is a good looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had um Jeff. Oh, um, of course. We've had, um, I'm trying to think, oh, we've had, we've had, we've had many, many. And of course I'm, you know, the, um, the, the host, the, the, the king of the bald men. So, <laughs> Hey, haven't you heard this term bald men are sexy? I no. <laughs> well, actually I have, I have, it's on all my business cards. Well, so, there um, go. there you go. So that was the segment back when I thought I was cool. Roll the sting. Ooh, how you like me now? How you like me now? Ooh. Back when I thought I was cool. Fantastic. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, G Man, thank you. Thank you so much so far. Yeah. So we um we're obviously brought here by the uh the whole COVID nineteen thing and um we're always keen to get everybody's unique perspective on how they've been dealing with it and what they um how they're coping with it and what, how they sort of plan to sort of come through to the other side. So tell us about when it first hit, gig cancellations, but more about your emotions when you realise, hey, I'm going to lose gigs uh, all of a sudden. Okay. Well, there's so many emotions going um, through me as, as you were talking about all that. So I think I'm just going to add in, you know, bits and pieces here and there. Um, first things first, obviously, when we found out, you know, about the virus sort of uh, going going insane and obviously it's turning into a bit of a pandemic and everything and I think the gigs started cancelling and got started started getting cancelled and I think literally in a span of three days I had over I mean I, I, let me just give you one more thing before I say that what, I, what I'm about to say is before this COVID-19 hit uh, took place I was actually in a really good place when it comes to gigging and stuff I was doing on an average of, of about five to seven shows every week wow and that includes weddings uh, your residencies all that kind of thing so I was like I was finally getting in a really good place I'm like cool I can finally you know um, sort of do what I want to do I can sort of live I can be a bit more comfortable with what I want to do I can buy guitars I can do all that sort of stuff great awesome and literally not too long after that when this happened like so in a span of three days I uh, you know sort of lost uh, over tens of thousands of dollars in income which is not obviously and I know for a fact I mean first it hit me and it was like I was like I don't know what's happening and I don't know what, what's going to happen and so I think I, I felt very like someone had pulled the carpet from under your feet Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that, but I knew that this, I wasn't the only one who was going through that because I knew that this was something that was out of my control and everyone else's control as well, in a way, uh, especially when it comes to, obviously you have to follow some c certain uh, form of protocol to, you know, for cancellation or anything like that, because we want to try and flatten that curve. And I think that we've done pretty well. So I know that there's a higher purpose for that. So, and I think that this was, this was, I mean, obviously as, you know, but, I, but for me, I've tried to make the best of the worst situations. Let's put it that way. Yep. yep. And how, how have you yes. done that? How have you tried to, what have you done to sort of make Uber busy? So yeah. um, it's, it's actually insane because I'm, I'm doing so much stuff at, at home. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of my live stream stuff or, you know, I've been doing I have. collaborations. Oh, okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've done all that. And I think it's been really cool because I've learned every week, uh, week after week. And I was just looking at it. So I think I've done about maybe a total of eight different live stream performances already. So that's yep. over eight weeks. Uh, that I've that I've well, already done that, and I think every week I'm trying to you know everything every week is like a learning curve. So because I'm learning something new, I'm learning something different. I'm learning something new about lights. I'm learning something new about editing. I'm learning something like that I didn't actually think about, you know, because I'm just out there performing. Because I'm like, well, I don't need to do all that. But now it's like, okay, hang on, maybe it's time to learn more about the tech stuff, which I've always wanted to do but never really had the opportunity. So I'm studying a lot, like you know, I'm trying to teach myself things I'm trying to do that and most importantly like when this first thing happened you know I was I, I do want to say this um, that I was watching certain musos and I was watching people and they were performing and I was like wow they have incredible sound quality how did they get that sound quality you know and I and the thing is I actually asked some of them and I was like hey what's uh, how did you how did you do that and the thing is this is what really annoyed me it was a lot of musicians were actually very evasive about that question 
Really? They were, yes. Um, and one of them even said, and um, you're going to laugh at this because I definitely did. <laughs> um, they said, it's because they have a very high speed computer. Right. And I'm going, mate, even a five year old would know that's, that's just, that's, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's, you, you, I know you're pulling me a fast one. So, <laughs> anyway, so I figured out on, then I just like, you know what, hang on. If you can do it, I can do it. You know, so I wanted to look it up, how I can do it with my setup. And I think, Eventually, when I got that sound, I wanted to help other people. So I, I literally, I was like, okay, you know what? What I'm going to do is I know how to do this for me, but I want to try and help you know, other people that I can. So I just put it up on my personal Facebook page. Hey, if anybody and you know what? I, I know for a fact that you did that because um, another guest that we've had, Adam Roach, and I know on his live streams that you've been on the live stream and you've been giving him tips and giving him, oh, yeah, turn the vocal a bit down and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you're very generous of spirit. And I think that's what the industry needs, surely. I mean, I, I just think that, you know, one thing that we can all learn from this is like, you know, you can still be kind you know yeah. it doesn't cost anything to be kind you know yep. it's like you can be you can be kind and you know it's like you can you can help it, it seriously it's it doesn't bring you down i think i you know it's not about having being in competition with anyone you know i'm i don't want to be in competition with anyone i don't you know it's not about the competition but i do appreciate people you know all coming together you know and we can yep. do it like we can we can take it a day at a time or whatever it is i know today may work tomorrow tomorrow it may not work and i'm not saying i'm always this happy and positive you know there are days where i've i've got bad days as well but you know what i'm okay with that because yep. as long as the majority of the days are better than not so good i'm okay yep. with that hey g man yes. dock of dock of the bay oh okay <laughs> Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting where the evening comes Watching the ships roll in And I watch them roll away again I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away I say I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Yes! Trumpet solo! Love it! <laughs> love it, love it! Uh, hey, um... I, um... We obviously mental health is a is a real significant um, part of this this interview. When you have big life changing moments or impactful things like COVID nineteen, um, what's your mental state? And do you need to be strong and careful about not lapsing or anything like that? Or are you so far, you know, so far out of that that you're all cool? Um, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm human, right? I'm human like everyone. So as I said before that, you know, I, I do have, you know, not very good days as well. And that's okay. But I think the most important thing is like, you know, I, I try to keep the key for me is I need to keep myself busy. I need to keep myself proactive. I need to keep doing stuff. So obviously I'm writing, um, trying to write new original materials while well, I'm always writing. I'm always putting snippets, ideas, little things in my phone. Like I will wake up at three o'clock in the morning and just have an idea and I'll record it half asleep and then I'll go back to sleep. Things like <laughs> that. So I've kind of trained my, myself to do that. And I think that's the sort of stuff that, you know, keeps giving me purpose because it's very important to know that. I, I mean, you know, at the same time, there are also good times where I, I just don't want to do that. I just want to sit and maybe watch a bit of Netflix you know, and chill by myself, believe it or not, um, because I do live by myself and that's okay, you know, yeah. so, and yeah, so it's, it's harder when you're living by yourself, but you know what, it's, um, it's okay because I'm trying, again, I'm trying to make the best of what we can. And now I believe some of the restrictions have just uh, eased up a little bit. So I, I think I should be able to start catching up with friends and that's what I'm really, really craving. I'm, I'm really craving, you know, just uh, giving someone a hug, you know, and just saying, hey, oh my goodness, you know, because it, it just makes the, makes the world's difference, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I believe you can have five people around at your place 
um, now right as now. a result of yes from from now on. So um, awesome. me me and four other people basically. All right, well come on down. Let's or I could just or I could just come over five times. So <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, and and what about um, your friends, your network within the music industry? How uh, how do you feel that they're coping with the whole thing? I mean, you've spoken about how much money and potential you know work not potential work work that that you've lost obviously it's the same for everybody else but when yes. you're working five to seven days a week that's a lot that's a lot of it is of I'm money a walking zombie but i loved it because you know it makes everything uh everything worth it you know yeah yes so but your your network how are they how's how are they going friends um, and well I've, I've got obviously friends from you know not just musicians but obviously you know from different walks of life some of them obviously still have the jobs but they are other people who obviously because they're not classified as essential they have lost the jobs but somehow some musicians have you know uh, they're still working really hard they're doing stuff from home and and i think i just keep sending messages here and there just to be like hey guys you know i'm here if you want to talk i just keep reminding them that it's okay like you know if you want to talk I'm here. Just, just message me. I don't care what time of the day or night it is. You know, I may not see it straight away, but I'll, but I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But please, you know, just, just make, make the effort. Or like I'm saying, I know it's, it's. Sorry, not make the effort. That's not the right thing to say. But I'm saying, it's okay. I know what it takes to make that effort in the first place. That's yep. what I'm trying to say. And I think, and I'm very appreciative of the fact because I know it took me a lot to get in that headspace to be able to reach out. You know, and yep. I think, and so, so obviously I'm doing that with other people just to let them know that, hey, they can, they can talk to me and message me anytime. Yep. So, no, look, it's a, it's a really good message. And, and what I've taken out of um, uh, all the things that you've said um, tonight, uh, one of them is acknowledge your feelings and it's okay to be down sometimes. It's, and you, but you have to acknowledge it and yes. then reach out to people. Reach, there's, there are people out there all the, all the time, your friends, your network, that will be there for you Absolutely. and you just have to reach out and um you know that's a that's reach a out and that's somebody reach yes do it <laughs> <laughs> reach out and reach out and reach out and touch somebody because there are only five people allowed now so you can't touch a little bit <laughs> it's not too much Ah, uh, that's good. Hey, um, there's a, there's a song here that I I really want you to um to do. That's on on my list. It's a it's a Diesel song, Johnny Johnny Diesel. And um, I actually know I actually know where where he lives. He lives in a in a small country town. Ask me where does Diesel live, Brian? Where does Diesel live? Well, he lives just on the outskirts of a small country town. It's um it's actually right on the top of Me Tongue. <laughs> Can you can you play that for me? <laughs> I see what you did there. I, yeah, I did that. I did that. Tonight's the night I'm gonna make my true confession. I've got my courage up. There's nothing that can keep it down. My world gets tangled up in good intentions. No one my heart try to say yeah. So why do I forget every time you get me right on the tip of my tongue? Right on the tip of my tongue. Right on the tip of my tongue. On the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's me tongue. On the top of me tongue. Tip of me tongue. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. go hey, mate. feel free to use that joke anytime you I, want to. I think I will. You think you will? <laughs> hey, we do. Um, we ask all of our performers to nominate a charity, and that charity can be themselves if they're really struggling with uh, with a bit of cash. Um, and and basically, all of those uh, hyperlinks for their nominated charity can be found on our website, which is lockdownlounge.live. And I'd encourage everyone to jump on our website, and you can see all of the uh, interviews that we've conducted so far. Now, um, now, G Man. I guess it's sort of, uh, it, it makes sense with all the things that we've spoken about, but you'd like to nominate a charity. Tell us what charity that you'd like to nominate. Um, I would definitely love to nominate Beyond Blue. Yep. 
Fantastic. Uh-huh. All right. So on your um, uh, your video link on our website, there will be a little hyperlink for uh, Beyond Blue. And so obviously Beyond Blue are there um, to support people with, um, you know, uh, struggling with mental health. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. That's definitely my take on it. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, time for another for another song. We've got heaps of songs out of you. It's been okay, fantastic. Wow. <laughs> and um, this is another another original song. So tell us a little bit about this song that you're going to perform for us now. Okay, this next song is called Higher, and um, it's uh, it's it's sort of in the similar theme. Yes, it's about uh, you know getting people together, and it's about knowing that you know we can stand up together and live higher as one. So I think that's the, that's the main lyric in the chorus. And, you know, we can stand for something better and stronger as one. So, and it's, it sounds cheesy when you say it like that, but I think at the same time, sometimes a little bit of cheese is okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, Aussies can't get enough of cheese. I know that. So, <laughs> yeah, got to have more cheese, mate. Like, right. Everybody, everybody loves cheese. Yeah, I'm true. a big fan of cheeses. I will... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Praise anyway. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. All right. Well, um, I'm going to let you get set up. So um, this is G-Man, ladies and gentlemen, singing another original song, and this one is called Higher.
fantastic, G-Man. Hey, Thank you are uh, you you have just got a beautiful silky voice. What's your range like? Because you go up. Is that all chest voice or is that a little bit of uh, head voice, mixed voice? What's going on there when you voice there? Yeah. So um, obviously, I'm able to go into my third bridge as well. So because my natural voice, I'm I'm actually a baritone. So really? I'm a, I'm a baritone, but obviously I've learned on how to use my voice in, in I suppose it all started because I, I started, you know, working in bands where they just wanted to keep doing female songs. And I'm like, <laughs> why is everyone doing female songs and there's no female singer? So it kind of just started from there. And I think I just started getting used to doing that. But then eventually I started, you know, because I did a bit of training. I, I did study music when I was uh, in, in when I came to Australia in 2005. So I started Box Hill Tafe. And that was when, you know, all the things, bits and pieces sort of, you know, put together because before that I started when I was 18 years of age. So I had no training in music wow. or anything like that. So, um, I, so I've been, I'm a trained singer, but I'm a self-taught guitarist. Right. So and awesome at both. Oh, thank you. You took mine. <laughs> I'm just honest. I'm just honest, my friend. So, um, so yeah, look, uh, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of young budding musos that, that watch this show and, um, you know, technique again, it's really important, isn't it? Um, absolutely, and, absolutely uh, you know, your yourself, range is fantastic. And oh, are you, are you still teaching as well? I used to teach, but obviously I, you know, because I, I took out time to focus more on my music and stuff. So I was, you know, doing a few nights a week and I think it was, it, it just got really hard because I couldn't gig and, you know, I, I just always was tired at gigs and I felt like I couldn't perform. Yep. And I think the most important thing was I got really, uh, I suppose I got a little annoyed with teaching and, and I know a lot of teachers can relate to this is, you know, teaching kids who actually didn't want to be there. Yeah. So, and I think that's one thing that that's sort of straight away, it, it, that just drains me straight away. But you obviously have to put your happy face and you have to do what you can, you know? Yep. So, but outside of that, I was like, you know, actually, you know what? Oh, I want to focus on, on this stuff and I want to focus on, because I think that time, this is about 2008, 2009, or maybe a little yep. over that, when I, when my gigs, obviously gig load started increasing. So I was like, well, okay, I started doing that. And then I, I you know, started focusing on my songwriting and all that sort of stuff as well. Yep. No, no, look, that, that makes sense. And no, I can see that that would be frustrating because, you know, music is such a, uh, a passion pursuit. And when you've got, um, you know, someone that, that doesn't really want to be there or is not as passionate as, as you, and obviously kids are, you know, finding their way, um, it's, it can be difficult, um, you know, Absolutely. when they, they don't share that passion. So Absolutely. no, I get it. I get it. Hey, uh, hey, G man, one of our most right. famous segments on our show is Ooh. a segment called gig chicken. And uh, it's all derived from the fact that every musician, no matter where you play, what you do, corporate gigs, pub gigs, they always give you chicken and boiled chicken, fried chicken, hollow chicken, any other chickens you can think of. Yeah. Uh, gig chicken. Gig chicken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is the perfect segue Every good segment needs a good sting. Ladies and gentlemen, roll the sting. There you go. And so we always ask our artists if they will harmonize with me on Kick Chicken. Can you do that with me? One, two, three. Kick Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, G-Man. No, Thank no, you. No, I think that was in key, sort of. So. No, nah, it doesn't matter. It's all it's all foul, no matter what you do. Oh. Yeah, I did that. I did that. All right, so I'm going to ask you a series of questions. If you, if you are successful, we will send you some chicken in the mail. It will arrive between 4 and 72 working days. Still lukewarm. Okay, are you ready, G-Man? Yes, I am. Okay. Question number one, gig chicken, using my radio voice best gig you've ever played um that would have to be oh goodness that's a that's a hard one but one of the best ones i have done is uh, i believe when i i did a okay so this was their opening act slot for john stevens so i did that so that was really cool that was back in i think 2015 end of 2015 so that was cool so we one of the support acts for john stevens and that was absolutely incredible because that was that was when my band actually started playing uh my original music but as a, as, a, as a band so that was cool before right. that i was just acoustic songs yep so that would have to be definitely one of my i suppose the most uh iconic gigs for me in terms of 
you know, sort of getting out there and playing my own music in front of a big audience like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, a lot of our artists have said that. Artists that have played in, you know, mega cover gigs all around the world, but the gigs that they value the most are, you know, original uh, oh, original absolutely. gigs. That's why we do this. That's why we learn the guitar. That's why we spend years and years locked up in our bedrooms practicing, that's sometimes right. locked up in our bedrooms doing other things, but that's not <laughs> what the show is about. So Ooh. I don't know why I threw that in. Um, question number two, weirdest, weirdest gig you've ever played? Weirdest, weirdest yep. gig. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Well, this will have to be, I suppose, a wedding that I did and that was that was interesting because I was performing and um, you know obviously everyone's having a good time and all that kind of thing but I think this is towards like close to the last set and um, this gentleman who I spoke with at the start and he was absolutely lovely but by that time he was completely drunk right <laughs> and he's dancing away he's like you know going away and doing his thing and the next thing you know he actually falls on me <laughs> So he falls on me and I'm in the middle of playing a song. So he falls on me. I cut my lip, you know, there's like blood going everywhere. I smash a bottle. There's like all my electrical equipment. Around. Uh, I mean, obviously, yeah. So there's water everywhere anyway. And then somebody, and I remember one of the people who was talking to one of the keyboard, he was talking to the keyboard player. And while they were talking, this person actually, I think there was like pizza or something on that, at, that food, uh, at that place. And this guy put a slice of pizza on our keyboard. <laughs> and I'm going, what is wrong with you? Like, do you, do you want me to come to your... I said, where do you work, mate? He's like, oh, I work at Bunnings. And I'm like, well, do you want me to come over there and, and just use, my elect use the electric drill and make holes everywhere? Would you like that? So anyway, so that, that was definitely, I have to say, that it was like something or the other was all happening at that gig. You know, wow. we just kept trying to keep a straight face and like, okay, right, we were this part, let's finish the song. And then we have to take a break. Anyway. So, so you nearly got electrocuted. You got a bloody lip and you got... There was pizza water everywhere. On your, water. Yeah, and water everywhere yep. and pizza on your keyboard. Yes. Not good. More, more cheeses. <laughs> more chicken. No chicken, no, though. No, no chicken, just more cheese. That's a good story, my friend. Thank you. Okay, question number three. You are leading at the moment, okay? So your chances of getting your gig chicken are very, very high. Last time you were nervous. Oh, I have to say before this interview. Really? Yeah. And now that you've, now we've done it, it's just like a warm bath. It's like me and you in a warm bath together with chicken. Mm, that's a very pretty sight. I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying not to have it, you know, it absolutely burned in my head, but okay. I will, I will it's all right. There, there'll be a video graphic coming up now of uh, no. me and you, Super. No, that won't happen. Okay. Our, our production manager, TNJ, is, is a very skilled man, but even he would... Um, probably struggle putting that graphic together he'd be dry reaching as i speak right now okay now um now this we have a supplementary question for this question because everybody says the same thing and i need to change it up so question four most requested song i think that's a that's a question that almost every muso knows Yes. And I think you laughing exactly because you know what I'm talking about. You know, right? Nay, it's nay, cool. I don't. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, it's about an animal. <laughs> I know it's not pony either, So, but the other type of animal. Yes, okay. it's horses. Okay, okay. So now I have my supplementary question because you see, this is what a good host does. She comes up with a plan B. What's your favorite song to perform? Oh, goodness. Um, there are way too many to answer, like just to make, I suppose to say just one song, but I, I suppose it depends on, on the night, depends on the time of the night as well, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so I have, I suppose, different favorites, you know, could be at the, the chill set, could be one during a dance set, one could be, you know, just the middle of the road, it just depends on how I'm feeling. Okay, during a dance set then. Um, well, I love the Earth, Wind & Fire stuff. Like, I love all that big soulful stuff and BGs and all that kind of thing. So it, it's kind of cool, like, you know, really vibing and grooving on that because just and just watching people have, have a bit of a good time or even, um, you know. Can you give like, me an Earth, Wind & Fire tune right okay. now? Yeah. Oh, jeez. September 
Love will change in the mind of pretender While I'm chasing the eyes away A falsetto, my man. That Thank and you. <laughs> just happens to be my favourite Earth wind. Also, now that I've heard your version, I know my my kids will be dancing away in the lounge room. They will be going crazy. Yeah, yeah, a little bit cooler than than what you just did then, because the, you know they're very they're very very self conscious about their dancing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You have to put a video of them dancing at it. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, plenty of plenty of video of me and my kids doing ridiculous things. That beautiful. That's for another show. Okay. okay, you are you are going very very well at Gig Chicken so far. All right, question five for the Gig Chicken: most famous person you've met or performed for? Um, well, John Stevens is obviously out there. Yeah. Know, so definitely that you know in terms of who i perform for uh and obviously uh the coach uh pair bristow uh, so that's his name and he's uh he's based in la um he's originally from sweden but uh yeah so he that, that was one of the most uh turning moments in my life where i actually got to perform my song live your life in front of a massive audience and you know i actually got to talk to him and he actually even signed my ukulele as well so wow. i'll show you show me show me that Tell me about, oh, wow. <laughs> Gee, man, you're awesome. Tell me about, about um, this guy. So he's um, from Sweden. He's called The Coach. He's a vocal coach. He does a lot of stuff on Facebook, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Facebook, uh, on Instagram, on YouTube, obviously. Like, you know, he's, uh, he's massive. So he's, I, I don't even know, he's got like over 800,000 people on his page and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's pretty insane. Yep. But uh, he, he's like, yeah, so he's obviously, he, he's got a lot of, um, I suppose, uh, singing programs and he's got a lot about, you know, performance uh, and about, you know, breaking your own sort of molds in a way. So I think mm -hmm. that's what he's, he, it, that's what I found that with him, it was incredible. And obviously him and I keep in touch all the time. Right. What so, was his name again, please? Per Bristow. So P-E-R. Yep. So it's written as P-E-R and Bristow. So B-R-I-S-T-O-W. Right. Okay. All right. Well, it's good, good for our audience to know that kind of stuff, man. That was, that was excellent. And you even threw a song in the middle of gig chicken. So you get extra points. So you'll be getting a, a, a chicken and a quarter in the mail. Ooh. You have won gig chicken and your first prize other than the chicken is to hear the sting again, play the sting. <laughs> Chicken, Get man, chicken. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Hey, um, yeah, yeah, find, find that, find that note, that chicken note. Hey, um, can I have a little bit of Bee Gees, uh, staying alive? Oh, okay, no worries. Hmm. <laughs> Well, you can't tell by the way I use my wall. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Music loud, and pull men warm. I've been kicked around since I was born, and it's alright, it's okay. You may look the other way, but we can try to understand. New York Times affect G Man. Whether you're a brother, whether you're a mother, you're staying alive, staying alive. If you're the city breaking in there, by the chicken, we're staying alive, staying alive. Staying alive, staying alive, ha, 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 staying alive. We can walk. So good. 
Thank you. So good. <laughs> so good. Now, I don't know if, if you're aware of this, but we had um, one of the members from the Australian Bee Gees show on our show mm-hmm. recently, and they've been um, in Vegas for the last pretty much 10 years at um, yeah a residency at a casino there. And so we got a great insight into how they're going. And, of course, Bee Gees have just got such an amazing catalogue. Love of it. music so Absolutely. that was amazing hey um you have been a, an amazing wonderful um guest g man so you've been an amazing host i know <laughs> no 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 thank you you that's that's very kind of you to say and um it's very amazing what you do by the way so you know it's thank you for keeping so many people entertained in this time and you know we wouldn't be here if if it wasn't you know especially in lockdown so we thank you you know apart from all musicians and you know i i want to say thank you from all of us thank oh that's that's very sweet thank you so much look it's um it's uh it's a passion project and um the wonderful thing from me personally is that you know you and i had never met before in fact we've never spoken before until this interview yeah. and it's such a wonderful platform for me to um to, to branch out and make new connections and meet amazingly talented um people and part of my um so i'm i'm a artist too um and this has just been great for me because uh, my stable is building you know i'd i'd certainly be throwing work your way my friend without a doubt so thank you so much that i really appreciate it hopefully after the restrictions are lifted off i'll 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 be there (laughs) good man we will we will sit down and um share chicken chicken and cheese in a bath together Okay, we need to get, get oh, moving on. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I don't, I don't move on. I stay. I hover. I hover. I hover in that awkward space. Hey, um, I don't want you to go away because um, we 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 want you to help us close the night. But I do want to promote our Saturday night show, ladies and gentlemen. We have the amazing Gary Pinto on Saturday night from CDB fame and Dancing with the Stars, and he's like. He's been ringing me every week and saying, Brian, can I come on your show? Brian, can, please let me come on your show, please. You know, and I want to follow G-Man because like what a, what an entree, G-Man then. And I said, all right, all right, Gary. None of that is true, by the way. If Gary's watching this, he'll get it and say, get stuffed. How dare you represent? He's his head going, what are you talking about? <laughs> No, 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 we, we, we have hassled um, Gary and he's been so gracious to, um, to say yes and come on the show. So really looking forward to that one on Saturday night. It's going to be, going to be huge, G-Man. It's going to be huge. Can't wait. wait. Now, each week we finish off the show with a funny video of how people are coping with lockdown. You know, it's always good to see how everyone else is doing it. Here we've got a, um, uh, a DJ on the oven plates. Yep. I, yep. Something, something going on like that. And then we have a, um, uh, uh, you know, someone from your homeland, G man, a, um, uh, a sexy, a very sexy Indian man who's used toilet paper and candles to make himself very alluring. Yeah, that's right. I changed the light bulb, pat the dog. Okay, okay. No worries. <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. So, <laughs> I'm glad you did that. So let's uh, roll the video of coping with lockdown. <laughs> So there you go. So there you go. So there is our very, very sexy uh, Indian man who's probably thinking about getting in a bath with chicken with myself and G-Man. No. <laughs> it's getting crowded now. <laughs> hey, um, hey, G-Man, how about uh, a little bit of uh, Long Train Running? Ooh, great song. Okay. <clears throat>
Where would you be now? Come on. Without love. Without love. Where would you be now? So good, so good, G-Man. We would be nowhere without your love. That's what I'm saying. Without your love around us, like a warm bath, we would be nowhere. Hey, you know what? We, um, we, we like to finish off our show with a, uh, a message, special message from, from our guests. So whatever your message may be to our audience out there, just maybe a message of positivity, or it may be, hey, get on my website and book me when we... Uh, um, you know, we're ready to go, but the screen is yours. Um, just want to say, hang in there. Uh, we're taking it day by day, and obviously things are getting better. So when this thing actually, you know, relaxes, we can all get together, and you guys better come to my show, especially people who watch the live streams. I'm just saying, you know, because obviously uh, people watching from different places. Anyway, hang in there, and I'm excited to play music for you in person. Can't wait. Fantastic. Thank you so much, G-Man. Hey, um, you have been an amazing, an amazing guest. I'm going to get you to do one more song after I, after I do a, uh, an announcement from our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, Live from the Lockdown Lounge is brought to you by Cranber Music. Don't forget, I gave you a big spiel about Taylor Day's special event extending right to the end of May. So basically you buy a Taylor add a tailor for just $149. So you buy a tailor, add another one for just $149, jump on the website and you can see all the details. Conditions apply. Um, Live from the Lockdown Lounge is brought to you by Cranberry Music. Stores open, Limbrook and Elizabeth Street City. Go in there, buy your instruments, shop online, click and collect, all that kind of stuff. Cranberry Music. In fact, G-Man is from the Cranburn Music family. He used to teach this. That's the caliber of people at Cranburn Music. I mean, wow. If that doesn't make you want to just go there and buy stuff, I don't know what will. <laughs> hey, G-Man, how about, uh, how about a little bit of Roxanne to, to see us out? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Wow, you've already been putting me in the spot, haven't you? I have. That's, that's the deal. <laughs> Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. Those days are over. You don't have to say your body to the night. Roxanne, oops. You don't have to put on the red light. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red. Since I knew ya And I wouldn't tell that to ya Have to tell you just how I feel I won't share you with another boy You know my mind is made up So put away your makeup Tell you I won't tell you again It's a bad way Right You don't have to put on the red light, Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. Wow, what a way to finish. 
My yes. goodness, G man, that was so so good, amazing. Hey, you have been such a wonderful, wonderful guest, and um, so gracious with an insight into um, to your journey, both both um, emotionally and musically. So thank you again so much for that. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Seriously, thank you. The honor is all mine. Thank you. No, no, it's been it's been wonderful. And um, look, we encourage all of our viewers to jump on your website, jump on your YouTube, jump on the Facebook page, and um, follow you, support you, book book him. When you know, get him back to seven days a week. We want G Man working seven. My goodness. Thank you again, G-Man. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you very much. And well done to the show again. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. I appreciate that. Thanks again. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching live from the Lockdown Lounge. I am your host in a Hawaiian shirt, Brian Rolt. I know that because it says so just down there, Brian Rolt. Yes, that's how I know that. We hope you've enjoyed the show tonight. Don't forget on Saturday we've got Gary Pinto live from the Lockdown down lounge good night